We're locked, we're loaded. When I sold my bumper pull that you guys have seen us take to Georgia, I've had that trailer for about two years. Um, when I sold that trailer, I cleaned it out and put everything in this bucket. So now I got everything in the bucket and we're going to get the new trailer. And hopefully I got enough straps for these cars. Well, this one car. And uh, hopefully everything goes well. So it's much, much later. We got the trailer, picked it up in Kentucky. Now we're back up in Indiana, somewhere off 69. And I'm gonna call it for the night. Um, I've done like 550 miles today and I didn't start till the afternoon. So there's no reason to push it. As well as the E36 that we're gonna go look at. I didn't wanna show it to the guy's house at 1 a.m. He said it was cool, but I didn't wanna do it. So we're gonna be there 6 a.m. instead. When I say we're on the outskirts of town, I mean, that's all cornfields. The Z36 is staring at cornfields. A little bit of some trailer park. Okay. New winch works great. And it's cold, very, very cold. It's like 11 degrees. The sun's coming up. When I pulled up, there was no sun. Let me show you what we got going on in the trailer. Couldn't get it running, but we bought it for a good price. Not running, it's a 328. Um, it's got some goodies on it. Five speed, cool. This car's been passed around a lot in the Indianapolis area. Maybe you've seen it. Well, it's coming to, coming to me now, so say your goodbyes. So we bought this car for right around a thousand bucks. And uh, it wouldn't run when we got it. I hooked it up to a jump pack here and she fired right up. Um, I don't know anything about it. It's got a Condor sticker. So I'm sure we have one or two bushings there, suspecting the lower control arms, but they're not white, so not sure. Um, hard motorsports. Yep, we have studs. So that's pretty cool on our ESRs. The ESRs, they're really bad, but they make this car looks so much better they they do this car a lot of justice so they might stay how are the tires they don't have long they'll be gone quick but i mean this is what a thousand dollars gets you in an e36 ratty drift car these days um i'm sure it's got a welded diff of some kind in it we'll figure that out we'll go over it but this is just my first look at it when i bought the car i walked up to it i gave it a kick and I went, uh-huh. And then I gave it a front fender kick and I went, no way. I didn't get on my knees. I told myself I wouldn't get on my knees for this car, which didn't happen. Um, but it seems we do have a front jack point, which I'd rather have the rear, no front, but beggars can't be choosers for this kind of money. So it's got a 2.8 and a ZF and a hoodigan banner. I don't know. It's all one color, kind of, by chance. Overs aren't painted and I don't know. I'd crash it. Let's see. This thing needs every bit of love, and I'm not giving it much more than a smooch. Shifter. Oh my gosh, that's so bad. Dude, the whole carrier. The whole carrier is moving. That's pretty bad. Nice. Um, we do have door cards. They're smoked. I'll leave them, though. If they work, I'll leave them. They're better than nothing. If they, if they stay held on, frig it. I'll keep them. Steering wheel lock works. These are nice too. These are actually pretty nice. Manual leather. They do the thing. Oh, do I even want to look down here? I'm happy that someone else did this though, because then I didn't have to do it. So, yes, you can still buy E36s for $1,000. Here's what they look like. 
96 five speed 328 coupe the floors are absolutely gone someone put in some really bogus metal but I, I don't think it's worth doing much else it's really just not even worth saving the whole driver's side's done floor back there too it's really really bad so on a rust level i might give this car a 10 or a 12 for really bad and you know it's kind of a shame because this car that's still in one piece that we're gonna be ripping is horrible horribly rotted and then this car that's already been dismantled and is going to the junkyard in the next few weeks is absolutely perfect absolutely perfect this car's from arizona absolutely perfect so what we could do is we could cut out these floors and put them in here but that's just not worth it and that's not going to happen there's no chance this is going to happen this car is going to rip this car is going to get driven hard lots of fun lots of laps and when it breaks we might fix it and when it gets crashed it'll be done it'll get parted out motor pretty much all stock pretty much what i expect to see you know a leaky valve cover that i'm probably not going to do anything about zip tied radiator stuff that's good enough um an e-fan and we're just going to make sure it works even if it's a ghetto switch in the engine bay we'll just make sure the switch works definitely got to put a new boot on here some leaks in the everywhere but hey maybe the motor will outlive the car definitely and then it'll get freshened up and put in something else if it's healthy. Go ahead, go up, I'll watch it. Wait. Okay, well, we're on stuff. How about back here? This is so bad. Keep going up. Leave it right there, just off the ground. Oh my gosh. I wish I would have just left the material. Oh my gosh. Looks like it's under the sea down here. Look at this. Look at this frame rail in them. Oh my gosh. Gone. There it is right there. Condor rear subframe bushings. Subframe still in one piece. Seems to be surprising. Yup, subframe still in one piece. That's pretty good. Diff, what do we have? We have a tag right there. We'll have to clean that off and see what ratio it is. If it's stock, it's like a 293. We'll probably slap a 391 welded in it just for some partying. What do we have here for some control arms? Aftermarket. Adjustable lowers. Oh my gosh. Look at that. So bad. So bad. Both of these cars are so much cleaner. This one's perfect. This one's pretty darn good, especially comparing to this. What do we have here for a tag? I'm guessing a 2.9. All right, so we ran upstairs to the parts room. We got a few bits and pieces of some coupe trim, as well as might pop these funny guys on. Why not? We got them. So, let's throw some parts on. Alright, so all these clips suck. Like this, this just sucks. So I don't even think we're gonna kid ourselves with oh, that. One's really good, but I don't even think we're gonna kid ourselves with this trim. 
Sounds like a good idea. If it was a nicer car, maybe we'd see it through, but nah, it's just gonna be a nightmare anyways. All right guys, so what we're gonna be doing today is put this chassis mount shifter in the white poop box 328. We got the stock shifter out already. So I just noticed, don't mind the gaping hole in the floor. Ah, uh, that's safe. Don't worry about it. Don't even, don't even worry about it. All right, now that that's broken in half, I guess I'll replace on it. Got a good selection of trans mounts from the parts room upstairs. Uh, these ones look to be garagistic, chilling in a bag. Got a few mismatch condors. I don't know what this is. Maybe AKG, not sure. And then some stock ones. And we decided we're gonna run the pair of condor to match the subframe bushings in the car. Where are they? Yeah, someone took the time and actually did condor subframe bushings on this car, God bless them. And some adjustable arms. Got our condor mounts in. All right, so out here in the junkyard, found ourselves a good strut tower. It's from a sedan, but I think it's gonna be close enough. So we're gonna cut it out and weld it in the white coupe. This has been my scrap bucket for some time. It's a car I parted out probably a year and a half ago. And it's just been holding parts. Holding them all right. It's holding them real good. Got our strut tower cut out. We're gonna take this inside and see what we can use from it. Catch. All right, so we got the strut tower cleaned up pretty good. And uh, Thomas is over here working on our plate. How's the plate coming? Beautiful. Nice one. She's ready. Very nice, let's see how this fits. Fernski, what do you think, Fernski? I think we're gonna do good. Think it's gonna fit? Boom. Oh, I definitely ground in the wrong areas down here gotta get all that sealant out and then we can start tacking it in and that's where our strut will live it's not perfect it's definitely going to be a few millimeters off of where it used to mount but it's not going to make a big deal in our case so note to self this wasn't too bad to make this plate we just cut it out of another car clean it up a little but yeah so now i'm gonna mark down here we got the strut tower cleaned up and our plate cleaned up how's it looking good you ready well the good. The classic. Got the chassis mount finished up. Yep, we mounted it with, yep, you guessed it. Self tappers. Yes, sir. It feels pretty good. ZF, so they always feel pretty good. Oh, pretty notchy, but that's to be expected from a chassis mount. No fifth gear nonsense. No fifth gear lean. Huh? I guess a little bit. That would be lean. That would be straight. But not bad. Nice. Got the strut tower all welded up. Our welder's not great. Neither are our talents, but she's solid. Fernie, tell us about your whip. Oh, you know, it's just a BMW 1998 318. It's 
stock engine. 318 stock M42. Yep. It's got a couple miles on it, probably around 200 at this point. 200 miles? It's got rust, it's got dings, but it does slide. All right, so here's the 391 welded that we're gonna put in the car. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the front diff bolt upgrade in this car. So what we've done is we've gotten a 916th bolt and nut. We've got, I believe it's a garageistic bushing that, drop that out, we just drilled out. It's our 916th bit. And we also drilled out this right here with the 916th bit. You wanna make sure that you're straight and level there. Now our bolt will go through our bushing, through the front of the diff. And now what Thomas is gonna do is grind here so that our nut will fit on here like so. So this is what you do if you break off a bolt or you ruin your threads in here somehow. Uh, these threads were good. We just wanted to do the big bolt upgrade. So. All right, so now you can see as if the bushing was in the subframe, this is how it would go. So we clearanced for the nut, ground down the diff a little bit. There's plenty of meat here. You're not gonna snap this off. At least I've never done it. So this is how to uh, beef up the front bushing on 188 mil diff. Not bad, this is a quality repair. A lot of people probably wouldn't even notice that if they didn't know what they were looking for. All right, so they finished painting up the diff, sealing it up, tightening it up. Now they're gonna toss it in. Big strong men, go, go, go. supposed to put the nut there before you did that okay but... we'll just bag it out yep hey i'm happy that's still white still white <laughs> okay. all right so we got the diff finished up everything's tight mounts axle bolts we we're missing some axle bolts but luckily we had some so uh marked here gotta mark some drive shaft nuts still and then the uh, diff will be done. So here's our strut tower, all bolted up and done. I think that's a really good repair. Hopefully we don't have to do it to the other side. For now it's good. Lately I've been feeling myself.